Good morning, world. I am Judy, your web based therapist, making therapy accessible and convenient for our clients in Florida and New York, and of course, sharing information worldwide. Today, I want to talk about five actionable steps, five easy things that you can do to help you stop yelling. Again, after I did that first video on um, reasons you should not yell to avoid yelling, the feedback was, hey, how do I avoid it? How do I stop doing it? So we're talking about things that you can do to help you not yell. But before I get into that, I want to take a moment and say, if you are subscribed, thank you so very much for being a part of our world. And if you are not yet subscribed, please click the subscribe button so you can be subscribed and be a part of our world. And please remember to tick the bell so that you can, you're notified when I post new videos so that you don't miss anything. And of course, if you'd like to purchase one or three of my books, also a link below that will take you to a website where you can purchase as many of my books as you'd like. One, three, maybe more. Okay, let's get back to work. Um, the first thing that you need to do is use proximity to your advantage. Get close to the person. If you if it's um if it's that type of relationship, maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your child, maybe it's a member of your family, get close to the person. When you're close to the person within, you know, maybe re within reaching distance where you can reach and touch the person, reach out and touch the person, that kind of closeness. And it makes it harder to start yelling at somebody that's right there in your face, that's right there looking at you. When you're looking at that beautiful face of your spouse or that beautiful um, face of your child, it's a lot harder to start screaming and shouting at them. It, it encourages you, maybe even forces you to use your indoor voice. If you're looking at them straight in the face, you're looking at them, they can see you, you can see them. So use proximity to your advantage as much as possible. Get close. Um, and if it is not a family member, or some somebody that you don't have that relationship with, some, and maybe not some weird stranger in the parking lot that you're yelling at, but like a person that you have a relationship with, it's still worse to get close enough to the person where you're looking at them and they can see you and you can see them and it makes it easier to not get into that yelling. Um, two. Decide what you want to say or what you want to share before you start speaking. When you already have a plan, I, I, spoke, I spoke about having a plan in a different video. When you already know what it is that you want to convey, what it is that you want to share, it's easier to focus on the message that you want to deliver and look for ways to deliver that message. Look for ways that that message, your message, can be delivered appropriately because we resort to yelling when we feel that we're not getting through, when we feel that whatever it is that we said was not, um, that the person wasn't getting it. So we think, you know, the louder you are, the more direct you are, the louder you are, the righter you are. None of that really works. Louder, being louder doesn't make you right. Being louder does not make people hear or listen or do what you want. It just, being louder just activates that startled, that um, fight or flight response. So Use um deciding what you want to uh, what you want to share before you start speaking allows you the opportunity to figure out the best most effective way to communicate that to the person that you're going to be communicating this. Three, practice soothing techniques, soothing and calming techniques regularly. This is not just hey you do it today or you do it once in a while. This is something you should be doing on a regular basis because it helps you learn to regulate your emotions, your breathing, your interactions. It helps you self-regulate. So practice, so, um, um, this could be that uh, simple thing like breathing in and breathing out, you know, or the, go, do the Carl Winslow, three, two, one, one, two, three, whatever you have to do. Um, and there are a lot of great meditation, um, guided meditations that are online. If you just search for guided meditation, you'll find stuff. There are so many different breathing techniques. And sometimes just sitting down, just sitting down and just breathing can be very soothing. Find ways, figure out what it is that you find soothing and practice them regularly. Because when you are in that Zen space, space when you are in that calm space, you're more likely to interact and respond and engage with people with that calmer demeanor than if you are already tense about certain things that are going on. It may not, it may have nothing to do with what that particular situation, but when, again, 
when they're, when you're not all right, everything is magnified. So practicing um, soothing techniques and learning how to calm yourself on a regular basis will help you be in that better, that calmer, that more, um, that more you space that you need to be as you're interacting or in order to interact with other people the way you want to do, the way you want to interact with them, the way you want to present to the world. In order to do that, it's important that you're in your Zen space. Four. Mentally prepare for um, stressful um, interactions. These could be simple things as simple as walking into your home. You wouldn't believe how many people walk into home and start with, uh, um, and that becomes stressful, especially if you have um, more than one child or several children. Maybe it's your children and your sister or your brother's children or in that house and everybody left their shoes at the door. That's a frequent, hey, what people reason that people walk into the house screaming maybe you walk you know that you're gonna walk into the house and the children or the people whoever's there left the um left the dish uh, a sink full of dishes so when you are walking into situations that you think may be stressful mentally prepare yourself if you're coming into work and sometimes you know you know that and if you watch the other video you know that whenever you come in and things aren't going the way you expect you start yelling you know that's a stre um, stressful situation. In the car, mentally prepare yourself to walk into that stressful situation. If you're going into work and you know something is going on or something happened or something may be happening that could be stressful, mentally prepare yourself for that situation. That way you get yourself in the right mindset to walk into that and not have and be the one guiding your behavior and be the one guiding your response as opposed to having um, the immediate reaction guiding your response. If you got to sit in the car five minutes after you get home, just to zen out in order to be able to walk in and not trip on somebody's shoes, do that. Mentally prepare yourself to walk in. Finally, catch and redirect yourself. If your goal is to stop yelling or at least yell less, you're going, sometimes it's going to happen, especially as you're at the beginning, as you're working on it. Yeah. Situations will happen and you will forget yourself and maybe you'll start yelling. But that doesn't mean just because you did not succeed fully the first time, it's done. As you're getting better at it, catch yourself. If you notice that you're doing it, catch yourself and redirect yourself. You, you notice yourself yelling, just kind of stop, breathe, rem and remind yourself, hey, we're not doing this right now. This is not how we're talking anymore. We're not yelling anymore. And redirect yourself to use whatever the plan is, use whatever the technique is that you're choosing to use in order to be able to have conversations that are not yelling conversations. Um, yeah, that's about it. Let's do a quick recap. First, use proximity to your advantage. It's a lot harder to yell at people when you're close to them. So get close to who you're talking to. Two, decide what you want to share before you start speaking. Because when you know what information you want to convey, then it's um, easier to Find the right technique to share and convey that specific message. Three, practice um, soothing and calming techniques because if you are already in that good space, it makes it easier for you to interact from that good space as opposed to when you're already stressed and walking in and to more stressful situations. Four, mentally prepare yourself to for a stressful situation. If you're walking into a place where you know that, where you've noticed that you tend to yell or you, you know may be stressful, Mentally prepare yourself. If you need to sit in the car for five minutes and breathe before you walk in, do that. And finally, catch and redirect yourself. You may not necessarily get it and be super non-yeller the first time around. There may be times when you slip. So no notice when those if those situations happen, notice them, catch them, and redirect yourself. It's okay that um, you slipped once or you slipped however many times you slipped. The important thing is to remember to catch yourself. When you notice yourself slipping, point it out to yourself, give yourself directions of which way you want to, which way you should be going. And uh, yeah, moving from there. As always, if you or someone you know happens to be going through something that's more than you can handle, please remember that there are professionals like myself who are available, able, and willing to help and are even providing remote services who can assist with whatever you may have going on. So please figure out who those people are in your community so that if you need them, you can reach out 
and get the help that you need. And that is all we have for today. Good morning, worlds. Have an awesome day.